He's in the home computer museum <laughs> today. Why? Because there is an official opening of what you see here. So it is boxed PC games. Well, there is something about them. You know, when you, when you, have, <laughs> when you buy a game these days, you just have a DVD case or uh, just a code like a steam code yeah, or whatever or and or you go to steam to shop click <coughs> and download exactly with, exactly with fiber internet and in five minutes you have the game yeah and that's so completely different from the time when i grew up so going to the stores and buying a game that you heard <laughs> of you don't even know if it's <laughs> a good game or not uh if you're lucky you knew because mm -hmm. of shareware or because of pirating or playing it at a friend. Yeah, I was the pirate. <laughs> I think we all were in the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> but uh, but then you bought a game and a, in a big box and it had a manual, it had the maps or sometimes a mouse mat, a t-shirt. Um, and this just took you right into this world that the creators made for you. Yeah. And this is a world record. Yes. How did you do that? I got the idea in my mind to, to figure out uh, if my collection was impressive to the world mm -hmm. uh, just look at other other collectors uh, network a lot find these groups online where you could really uh, share your collection with each other and i started to 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 sort of search for other collectors with greater collections and after a search of one and a half year i figured there was no one that had <laughs> a greater collection so i thought well, all right Let's let's go all the way. Let's go for Guinness World Record and drive this roller coaster. And it definitely was a roller coaster. <laughs> it took me years to to set this record. But yeah, the certificate is there, and it was so worth it. What are the requirements of a box game? Because you have a box and a game. What else? You mean for the record? Yeah, yeah. for the record. I mean, it, it's a, a boxed uh, PC game, so it needs to be boxed. So no uh, DVD cases, uh, no dual cases. Um, also, no uh, no Mac games, no Atari ST games, no Amiga games, no Commodore games, all PC or IBM PC games. And it needs to be your personal collection, so not owned by multiple people, not owned by a museum. So this is all still my personal collection and it's an exhibit, it's exhibi exhibited here in the museum. So those are sort of the requirements, I guess. It what? needs to be complete, it needs to be, uh, so it's not just a box, it's the game in there, the manual in there. It needs to be all there. And if there's on the box like map included, does it need also need to have the map, or is it a gray area? Uh, no, if it, uh, for me it has to need the, it does need the map. Yes. <laughs> so I still have a storage with incomplete boxes, and I need to make them complete before they can be here on the shelves. How many games do we have here in the collection? Uh, I think by now it's around 2,200 box PC games. Yeah. And how many are in the official record? 1832. I'm not sure if I will ever uh, update the record. I mean, it was a whole adventure to, to do this, mm -hmm. but it was all for the adventure. It was all mm -hmm. for getting this Guinness World mm -hmm. Record. I mean, I don't mind if someone goes over it. Uh, it's, uh, it might have already happened, but I have lived this adventure and that was cool and it was awesome mm -hmm. to do, even though it had a lot of struggles, but I reached mm -hmm. the end result and that was fine by me. So now we just go mm -hmm. onward with exhibitions and <laughs> growing the collection even more. Can you show some of your favorite games here? So, well, we're standing here, so let's start here. A, a game that, that I like very much is Creatures. Um, and I think it has to do that uh, you had these eggs and you could these eggs would come out and there would be little creatures and you can teach them to, to speak and to play and to do stuff. But I think what's interesting is that you could keep your eggs where in the hatchery and your hatchery was on a diskette. So even though the game comes on a CD-ROM, the eggs need to be kept on a diskette. So you need to have both players to, to be able to store your eggs. So I think that's pretty interesting. Heroes of Might and Magic was a game I really loved. I played it a lot. I think I'm, I'm the biggest fan of Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Uh, some people are more of a fan of uh, part three. To me, part two, I, I like pixels a lot. Like if, if, if it has pixels, then, then my heart goes out to it. So I played that, I finished the entire game. I even finished the expansion of it. And uh, back in the day, I used to play this with my brother a lot and he also made levels. Um, so there was in a time where sometimes the game came with a level editor. In this case, it did. And you could make these amazing levels. And my brother loved that. And um, yeah, we, we played that a lot together. So I have so much good memories of that. Oldest game 
Um, I think we go to Shera here. It might be um, Mystery House. Um, it's from uh, 1980, and I think that was one of the oldest games there. But it's it's not with it's not complete in a box. But this is it is on the shelf because it's a very rare game. It is the first graphical adventure, so the first adventure with graphics, which is like insane back then. So that that's why it's uh, definitely something that needs to be displayed. Was there a box for the game or came it just on the no, floppy? No, it, it came uh, on the floppy, but it had like a sleeve like this one. And there's a, a, a copy of the sleeve underneath it, but that's a copy. That's not, a, not an original one. Of these other games around it, these are these have the original sleeves around it as well. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you want your circuit board design realized and printed, you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as $5 for a one or two layer design with worldwide shipping. Place your order now, links in the description. And there was a certain point in time where they stopped making these boxes for the games, but of course they still make collector's editions and they come out often in a big box as well. So I think one of the newer ones, it, it might be Command and Conquer Remastered. I also have the newest uh, World of Warcraft game, uh, Collector's Edition. So that one's over here. Um, and there's, there's a new one coming still. So those are some of the newer games that I have. And you will add them to the collection. They are boxed PC games, so they sort of count. Um, it feels different though, because it's not, we now live in an era where this is not uh, the normal way uh, games got sold. Like back in the day, every game had a box. That was just the way it was sold. And now it's just only when you pay extra money, you get this box. And I think most boxers from certain years were the same sizes also. Yeah, yeah, a bit. Like, especially in Europe, they were pretty, accurate with uh, using the same size. I mean, it differs a bit in uh, millimeters, but you can see here that all these boxes here, um, I, I think they are all uh, European boxes. Some stand out, you have like, you can sort of almost tell that this is not a European box because the size is different. It just sticks out. This is a horrible game, that, by the way. <laughs> uh, so don't, uh, don't film me too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of games here are some are super good, but some are crap. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the well, of course, I, I'm a collector. I like to display my collection uh, as neatly as possible. So the, the games that are mostly known and are also very popular are displayed on the uh, on these three shelves here. Um, the first shelf and the later two shelves uh, on the bottom, uh, those are more back to back um, and are lesser known. But sometimes I put some boxes face front uh, just to give them a bit more attention. I see Monkey Island. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. This is now now a hot topic mm -hmm. with Ron Gilbert's new game, Return to Monkey mm -hmm. Island. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, and there's, well, let's call it five, I guess. I see here the, the wheels for yeah. the, for the uh, copy protection. The, the, the Mix and Mojo and the Dial a Pirate. I think the Dial a Pirate is the most famous one of the two. But yes, they were needed to, to start the game. And are there games that you still want to find that are the actual treasures for a collection like this? Yes, most definitely. There always are. I mean, a collection like this is never complete. Part of being a good collector is accepting that. <laughs> <laughs> and it might have taken me a while to accept that. Um, but I think it's a, it's a good lesson for a lot of collectors out there. But there are some games that I really like to have. Uh, here, for example, you have uh, Apogee. Um, oh yeah, uh, always great games. Yeah, like Wacky Wheels, Hocus Pocus, even Mystic Tower. Uh, Alien, Alien Carnage. Carnage, I play that a lot. Mm -hmm. Some really people know enjoyable. it as Halloween Harry. That's also the same game, mm -hmm. but in a different name. The one game that I'm missing here um, the most, I think, is uh, Raptor Call of the Shadows. Oh, um, great game. I love that game and it's, it's, it still needs to be here on display. So hopefully one day um, I can add that to my collection. And I'm also missing one Red Cat game. <laughs> uh, and hopefully that will be joining it as yeah. well. Like Red Cat uh, and the Razende Rekenrace mm -hmm. for the Dutch people here. If people want to 
get some box games for their own collection what is the tip in 2022 to get them or where can you still find them for like a pretty normal price um it, it seems pretty impossible these days go and be lucky on king's day so go to the <laughs> netherlands on king's day yeah that's why and be I lucky also be lucky. bought the most box games yeah normal prices for these games don't exist anymore they do exist but like i said you have to be very lucky uh, or network a lot show people you collect these box pc games and people will say oh wait i have something on the attic um or uh, my my father used to play this i still have it and uh, i don't know um you can have it something like that so donations uh, help a lot it's getting more rare and more rare every day um and the prices are really ridiculous and it's also because of all these youtubers and all these media that mm -hmm. collecting is becoming popular um like you have very great collectors out there that show their collection that show their thrifts storing uh stuff like that um, or show Fudu fives in a build and then the prices explode yeah those are crazy people I mean, yeah i'm so sorry for that <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> yeah i think but i destroyed a little part of the 3dfx market but also probably saved a lot of cards that people want to throw away and then realize wait people still like this so mm. let's sell it so yeah that's uh, always a point it's a, it's a two-way yes. uh, thing but that definitely is a thing that in the media uh, it becomes popular and people like uh, seeing other people collect things and then think oh maybe i should start collecting that as well um, they learn things about it because th there is knowledge out there um, so you get enthusiastic about this and that's in the last few years i think the, the amount of collectors has quadrupled i, I may, maybe even more that that made the prices go up um, uh, and also there's a lot of scamming involved i mean uh, some things are like not an original game i think luckily for me I have most of the games that I want already in my collection. I started early and I think if you want to collect something these days, mm -hmm. I think you should move on to, well, maybe more the PlayStation 3 games or the uh, Nintendo DS games. Th those are now the era, the perfect era to collect those games. Mm -hmm. But with the new media, I think uh, the, the time frame in which you could collect these things is way, way smaller and the yeah. amount of collectors as well. What are the future plans? Yeah, the idea is that the collection will be here um, well, sort of permanent, so you can, uh, over the years, you can always find this collection here. And of course, there are some <laughs> exhibitions yes. every now and then. Um, so, well now, I, I had this keyboard, of uh, a broken keyboard uh, from John Romero. He smashed it when he was <laughs> playing a Quake game with another mm -hmm. person. Oh, you have uh, that? <laughs> I have that in my collection, and it's now in an, uh, in an exhibit uh, in uh, Beeld en Geluid, uh, the Sound and Vision Museum in Hilversum. Um, and it will open soon, so oh, nice. it's kind of exciting. Also, my uh, vanilla mm -hmm. Warcraft collector's edition is there, so it will be missing here, mm -hmm. but it will be there uh, to see as well. Mm -hmm. I had a Tomb Raider, and my Tomb Raider games were in an exhibit mm -hmm. uh, uh, this year, and um, also a Jazz Jackrabbit exhibit, and also a, a Games Are Art uh, exhibit, where I had a lot of games displayed uh, in Musea. So yeah, it is living mm -hmm. and it is ongoing and that's what I love about it. So mm -hmm. it, uh, it found its place. Yeah. We have also Dutch games in your collection. Yes. Let's go there because they are not in this area. True. They are on a separate area now in the museum. Yeah, uh, yeah we have to escape again. Uh. Yes, <laughs> because it's not uh, open yet. We are so illegally here. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's before, right before the opening. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> he is going to cut this uh, uh, ribbon. Right, come, come, come. <laughs> 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 All right. And ah. here's your twin brother? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I name him the PC King, and well, he's actually uh, he's more like a stand up comedian uh, <laughs> nowadays. But yeah, he's, uh, he's protecting the box PC games. <laughs> Let's go to the Dutch games. Amsterdam. Here it is. Amsterdam. Pretty famous. 
for being a sort of doom game, but mm -hmm. then in Amsterdam. <laughs> and do we also have the, uh, the German version? Uh yes, like uh, in Invasion Deutschland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do have it. It's not on display. There wasn't much room left to And display. this is the Dutch collection? <laughs> this or is the, the Dutch game or collection. do you consider that game for this shelf? Yeah, I think it, it might have been joining the games if there was space left. Darfilex was the, yeah. was the uh, developer of that game, uh, so it definitely needs to be in the shell, mm -hmm. but I mean, there's not much space. Yeah. And now let's go to the best collection of you. And I yeah. think it's also your favorite game. Yeah, that, that might be right. Yes, I think uh, I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of Jazz Jackrabbit. It also sort of grew on me. This is world's largest Jazz Jackrabbit collection. It, I mean, everything is there. You have like stickers, balloons, the yo-yo, the pen, a magnet, uh, like even the, the Christmas Chronicles in box complete. You have the, the graphics game pads. You have the plush of Jazz Jackrabbit. And yeah, of course the original game. First one didn't came out in an official box, but you had this uh, on mail order. You could get the, the manual and the diskettes. Um, and later the, the CD-ROM uh, with the manual. And that's how you got it. And the, the boxed version you see over there is a shareware. Uh, however though, uh, some time ago I got an amazing donation from uh, Luke Xu from uh, Taiwan. And he had found a Taiwanese Jazz Jackrabbit in box. And my mind was blown. I'd never seen the Taiwanese oh, version this before. This one? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the one with the orange Jazz Jackrabbit on it. <laughs> is the game also with an orange Jazz Jackrabbit? No, it's just the original English game uh, on this cat. But the box itself and the manual mm -hmm. are all uh, Taiwanese. The art of Jazz Jackrabbit was made by Nick Stettler. So that game over there, uh, Time Out Sports, is uh, one of the first games where his art was used in the game as well. Welcome to the Hope Computer Museum. We're an interactive computer museum. Since 2020 we were lucky enough that Anna decided to put his entire collection over here. We're very happy and very excited to be able to have this in our museum over here. It's uh, really one of the biggest selling points of this museum. We're here for Mr. Anna Brass himself. Give yeah. a hand for everybody to uh, give a hand to the uh, Welcome very much to the Home Computer Museum. It's really heartwarming to see all of you here. Uh, it really means a lot of you to have this public and to have people here that really know how to enjoy these games back in the day. A little introduction, uh, probably people will know that I am Anna Bros. But how did it all start? So how is it that I'm here today? So for that we have to go uh, a bit back in time to my childhood. Uh, back in the day I played a lot of games. My father had a computer for his work and he gained a lot of copied games from colleagues uh, and that's how I used to get in contact with uh, some really cool games like Command the King uh, or Prince of Persia. Uh, maybe some people know Sokoban. And my father used to love that game very much. So very early on, I got in contact with a lot of games. Already back then, there were quite some games available. But how do you know what games are the right games? What are the good games to play? Back in the day, the Netherlands used to be known, uh, gaming-wise at least, uh, used to be known for two things, and that's shareware and pirating. So um, I remember going to the Blocker or Intertoys and buying my own diskettes with shareware games on there and playing it all day and the day after that and the day after that. And later also with magazines, you've got these uh, CD-ROMs with shareware on it, and that's how we got to know about good games. And maybe some people remember a certain CD-ROM called Twilight. That's uh, where a bunch of full games were sort of compressed onto a CD-ROM. And you got like 20 games on one CD-ROM and they're all full games, uh, except it might be missing some cinematics or music um, to make it all fit on the CD-ROM. But that was, uh, yeah, that was how, how we got around back in the day. There we have an example of a Twilight CD, very <laughs> rare. It's here in the museum now, <laughs> well preserved. So 2006, there was a Queen's Day Market. And here in the Netherlands, we're very familiar with Queen's Day Markets. Now it's called King's Day Markets. And there I found a boxed copy, and that's this very boxed copy here of Day of the Tentacle. And how many people here know Day of the Tentacle? 
Wow, all right. I'm, I'm definitely talking to the right target audience here. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game, and I had played it so many times back in the day, but I had never found a box or never seen a box copy of it. And this was the first time I got in contact with this box copy. And I love the art on it, and it was such an, uh, it, it's an amazing game, and it, it, it takes you right into this world when you just look at the art itself. And then I got sort of enthusiastic about these boxes. It, just in a few days, I already found Diablo 1 and Diablo 2 and Dungeon Keeper in box. And I mean, people probably know that these are good games, but also the boxes, they look amazing with these, this demonic head up front. That's sort of when I started to realize how beautiful these boxes were, and that's when I started collecting. Uh, it was in the beginning of Mark Platz, and people, they didn't care that much back then about the box. They used to play the games and throw away the box. And on Mark Platz, I just bought every game, every PC <coughs> game I could find, and that's how I started very early in my collection. I got quite a big collection pretty soon, especially since on Mark Platz, all these big box PC games were one euro each. People didn't know what they had, and they just gave it away in, in big bulks. I met a person. Uh, his name was Peter, he lived in Hilversum, and he was known for having the largest collection in the Netherlands. I was a big fan of him. I, uh, I started to uh, get in contact with him, and we, uh, we met uh, uh, many times after that. And, and we talked about games, we talked about our passion and our worlds within this collecting. And that, that was very special to me. But after one and a half year, this person passed away. He was a, a bit older man and he died from lung cancer. And then his games collection went to his sons and I lost a big friend. So uh, that was a very sad moment. And uh, I got offered to buy the collection from these sons and that's how I ended up with most of his collection. And then all of a sudden, it took me a while to realize that I now had the, the largest collection in the Netherlands, which was kind of weird. I had, I had too much games, I couldn't keep it in my room anymore, so I had to find storage for them. Which was a bit sad, because I wanted to show my collection, I didn't want to have them collect dust in a storage. But it did uh, create the, the certain situation where I was sort of stacking all these boxes. Back then, I had a, a, it was the first time of me handling many games, um, so I stacked these boxes, and I sort of like, well, oh, this looks sort of like a throne. So I put a little chair in, in, uh, in the middle, and I made a, this famous picture of me sitting on this throne, known as the throne of games. This throne picture went viral on the internet. And from that moment on, I was also known as the PC king. Then I was like, all right, I have the largest collection in the Netherlands. How is this compared to the world? Are there other collectors out there? Um, and I was already in, in contact with many other collector, uh, collectors in the Netherlands, but also abroad. Um, there's also this very huge uh, Facebook group called Big Box PC Game Collectors. Big shout out to them. Uh, there are very amazing people there still today. If you are a box PC game collector, then that's definitely the place to go. So I was searching on the internet for collections with, with like larger than mine. And I stumbled upon one, one picture in particular. And I saw that picture and my mind was blown. I mean. This was an enormous collection. I saw these cabinets, and they were all filled back to back with boxed PC games, just exac exactly as what I was, was collecting. My mouth fell open, and then I started looking better at this picture, and I started looking at these shelves and counting the games, and I was like, oh, I have twice as many games. And it was underneath there, it said, this is the, the largest collection known in the world. So I was like, all right, I need a picture. I need a picture of my games. Because back then, all my games were in these banana box, And it took a weekend, we had one day to set it all up, and the other day to tear it all down. But this picture also went viral, and it went all over the internet. And then I was like, all right, why not go all the way? Why not set a world record? It was already a couple of years later, and I started to realize I, I couldn't find another person with a huge collection bigger than mine. So I was like, all right, I'm going for it. I'm going on this roller coaster adventure and set the record. So, that's what I did. Here it is, officially. This may sound easy, but it wasn't. Getting here with this certificate, it took, it took years to get there. I had to take a lot of pictures of all these box PC games. 
Um, and here's a big shout out to Humphrey van Lee who helped me make these pictures as well. Thank you so much. It was uh, without you, I wouldn't have gone here. Probably, maybe not even have okay. a certificate. So thank You're you welcome. so much. And it was also a very good company to talk to you about games and other stuff. In the end, there was this the, the taking of all these pictures, and also there had to be an official counting day. A lot of friends helped me with counting, and uh, also my wife helped me managing everything. And uh, Bart Demers, also known as Dos Gamer on YouTube, he helped me make this beautiful video. And with that, I went to Guinness World Records, and then it happened. So this this is like it was an insane moment for me, and I might not recommend this whole roller coaster trajectory for, for other collectors, but I think it, it was a nice adventure. I already had some exhibitions, I had a Lucas Arts exhibition. I'm a very big fan of Lucas Arts games, but I wanted to have it in a place in the world where people could go. I always dreamt of a place where I could share my entire collection. So at first I was in a different location. My whole collection went to Zwolle, uh, to the uh, games and computers museum. That was beautiful and it was, uh, it was a nice place, but when I heard that they opened the doors here in Helmond at this location, I was like, this is the right place. And it feels like you have all these home computers and you have my collection, all these games that are meant to be played on home computers. So for me it felt like one plus one is three. This is really a perfect win-win situation. I went to Bart and we started to uh, talk and we made it happen. So now it's here officially in the museum, and it, is, it just really means a lot to me to be able to show it. And also uh, their effort they put in to make it look as good as it does now, that is really heartwarming. When you look at these games, also here there are three cabinets with my games. These are the Dutch games in my collection. Um, this is how I want them to be looked at by people. So to some people, this might be a bunch of games, to me, it is also like a, a, a huge part of history. Of course, you have like the very first game like Pong or Computer Space. Yes, that's of course big steps for the computer game. But to me, this era of PC games was where it all happened. Of course, you have like Mario and you have Pac-Man and Zelda, uh, not to mention Link. There's also Link. Donkey Kong, those are all very famous characters in gaming history. But let's not forget things like Tomb Raider, or Warcraft, or Lemmings, or Worms, or Diablo, and I could go on and on and on, and it will all be there, visible for the, for the people to see, and it will be all in the original box, and they're all complete. That, to me, were the, were the games that are memorable. They were the polished games, the, the games that were made almost perfectly, with a good story, with a good music, and with good gameplay, and story-wise, it takes you away. To the children of today, I would like to tell them that there is more than Minecraft, Roblox, and Fortnite. <laughs> there is more out there, and you can see it here. So that's, uh, I think, an enormous step. Because it's not only international games, you have here the Dutch collection as well. And sometimes, uh, it's not only the game, Sometimes there are parts of the history among here as well. When you ask a random Dutch gamer, do you know any Dutch games? And then people might say Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, that's one of the latest games and it's big. So people know it. Some people might even say Killzone. People for my time will probably say A2 Racer or mm -hmm. Red Cat. Uh, a lot of people might not know that before the 3D Red Cat educational series, there was also a Red Cat platformer out there. Uh, where you were just a cat with a pen on its head and shooting with a machine gun and pies. Also, A2 Racer. Uh, it's a very, I think it's almost an infamous game here in the Netherlands. So I think we're now at the moment where I go cut down, or cut down, the chop down the ribbon. Uh, <laughs> yes, so let's open the, open the collection. Okay. All right. Without further ado, three, two, one. So welcome, you can walk here. Um, there's a computer there that has a list of all the games here in this collection. Oh, I have a four pack. 
So this was the big tour of Anna Brass, his uh, famous collection. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's now finally opened. It is now finally opened. Yes, this so is uh, this is insane. <laughs> really cool, memorable well, day. Let's see uh, what will happen in the future with your collection. If it grows bigger or goes to other sh events and things. Uh, yes, yeah. we'll definitely see more of it in the future. So. Where yeah. can they follow you if they want to see where it goes? PCKing.nl. I still have to update it, but yeah, you know how it goes. Uh, but I think most of it will be found there. And also you can keep track on the museum website as well. So the Home Computer Museum in Helmond, uh, because that's where this collection is, uh, is now. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching.